Welcome to Wednesday Wellness, where we be well, get well, and stay well. Be sure to invite your friends and family and join us every week on Wednesday Wellness. Uh, Welcome, welcome, everybody. This is Eileen. I am grateful to have you guys here tonight, and welcome to Wednesday Wellness. We are a group of people who have met through a company that is biohacking, and we just want to get the message out to people to be well, get well, and stay well. And I can uh, tell you one thing about me is that I didn't believe that it was in the power of my body to heal. And because my physical was so bad, and I actually could not find any answers for my physical, and I had to go to the emotional and the spiritual to be able to cope with the challenges of feeling like a failure and that you're you're a drain on people and I did not know what we're going to talk about tonight which is called setting boundaries (laughs) and I thought of an example today so if you have to drive somebody somewhere and if you don't if you don't fill up your car with gas your gas your car has boundaries it can only go so far without the gas and you can only go so far and you have to refill it and then you have to refill it And that was a principle I was missing in my own personal life. And so Rochelle uh, is going to share with us tonight because to me, she has gone the journey. She was on the other side and she's learned how to draw boundaries. And I wanted her to share with you guys what she has shared with me to help me be a better person. So I'm going to turn the time over to Rochelle. Um, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, we'll just take it from there. Thank you, Eileen. My name is Rochelle Chandler, and I have definitely been through a journey. Um, I can say that I lived for many decades without boundaries. I'm not even sure I understood the term. I was um, raised in a large family, and we didn't have need for them. It was very much like like a slumber party every night, and so I just thought the world was going to be like that when I grew up to be an adult, and I was not prepared for many of the circumstances I would find myself in later in life. Um, I have come to understand that boundaries are not a bad thing. Um, I think that there's a myth out there that if you have boundaries, it means like you're not likable, you're not um, accommodating, or you know, you're not someone that's easy to work with. And, and there's kind of that, that stigma on boundaries. And, and I've learned that that's also very incorrect. <laughs> Just so I, I, definitely think it's worth going into what I have learned boundaries to mean. And really what it means is it's creating a literal safe space around you, around me. And inside of my boundaries is my ability to take care of myself. It's my ability to protect myself. It's, and it's further than that. It's also asking myself some very key questions. Like, do I feel safe right now? Do I have everything I need? to function right now? Um, am, I, am I giving away too much of my time or my space right now and compromising my ability to feel safe? So as I started to learn this concept of boundaries, um, as a woman, it was very difficult because my job and my family is to multitask. My, my job is to make sure that everything is functioning and that everyone has everything they need. And if anyone's going to go without or function with lack, it's going to be me. And I ran that way for 10 years and I started to run myself into the ground and I'm like, this isn't going to work. Um, and at the same time, I was deeply confronted with um, a member of my family who was exercising boundaries in a completely opposite way. Um, He was experiencing undiagnosed neurodiversity and his boundaries were very strong. There was no moving him. It was like a mountain. It was, I can't do that. I won't do that. Absolutely not. They cannot come visit. What, what is this? So it put the concept of boundaries in direct conflict in my mind and and in my paradigm of my brain. I was like, I don't, I don't understand. And it, it caused a complete breakdown for me and something that I really needed to pick apart to understand. And fast forward to today, I'm really happy to say that boundaries is a positive word in my life now. It's something I really embrace. It's it's a concept that has improved um, every part of my life, um, not just as a woman, but as a 
as a mother, as a professional, as a friend, because I now know when I've hit my capacity, it's something my husband taught me, like, if you don't have the capacity to do something, you don't. <laughs> Neurologically for him, that wasn't an option. For me, I would just use tomorrow's energy to do it. Well, that doesn't work. Um, I would just say, oh, I have to get the dishes done. I don't have time to take my vitamins. Well, I didn't have a very clear boundary there and I was getting sick. So that's not gonna work either. What I learned is that boundaries are, they're a necessary part of our ability to function. And, and basically what it is, is we get to decide what is going to be part of our world and what isn't. What are we, what do we feel safe with and what do we don't? Where do we hit our capacity? And, um, and anything beyond that, you know, has to, has to wait. And it started to take different meaning to me. So something as simple as, um, hey, can we, can, we, can we go watch a movie and it's 10 o'clock at night? No, that's a boundary, I need some sleep. You know, and that's something I, in the past I would say yes to, and then <laughs> couldn't, I couldn't get to sleep. I couldn't function the next day. I have an infant in my hands that can't sleep either. None of us were functioning. So as I started to embrace this concept of a boundary, um, I had the opportunity to put it directly into use that I wasn't expecting. And I do want to go through this because with my husband, we approached most of his life without, bound, without an understanding of boundaries. So when he started to break down, um, go through periods of anger or rage his breakdowns weren't acknowledged his boundaries around breakdowns weren't acknowledged they turned into meltdowns before we knew it they were shutdowns and we were just totally a mess uh, we didn't have boundaries around um, his diet we didn't have boundaries around sleep we didn't have boundaries around transitions um, and very quickly in each of those categories things became unsafe once we learned those and we started to acknowledge, okay, this is an area where we need to stop and we need to protect ourselves. A few months later, I experienced myself, or I experienced the same situation with my son. Um, and now I had boundaries. So when he was diagnosed with epilepsy at 24 months old, they wanted to put us, him on, on medication. And the, I was a little bit nervous, but you know, the doctor said, it's better that we treat these seizures aggressively and give his brain a break so he can heal. And I said, okay. So we start the first um, medication and the very first dose, I started to notice that something was off. He was already past his boundary in being able to communicate. By the next dose, he was off his boundary in being able to um, walk. He was dizzy. He couldn't eat. Like I started by the fourth dose, I pulled him off because now I understood he was past that line. He was no longer safe. Um, the second medication came along and we were able to extend it about 60 days. But you know, <laughs> you think you're getting better on something and we weren't treating it naturally. Well, we were, we were treating, we had a, a good foundation of support, but even then it hit a boundary where he was no longer safe. And because of what I had learned and the value I placed in understanding that protective layer, once he started to decline in function again, I pulled him right off and said, no, you've passed my boundary. I'm sorry, doctor, that doesn't work. And I went back at, and he's always had protandum and he's always had Nerf one and he's always had his omegas. And that was my foundation, right? I was building up his brain. I said, I'm going back to what I'm doing and I'm only going to do that. Um, and it really taught me that my boundaries, the concept of them are not only meant to keep me safe, but to keep you know, us all safe. Because if I had not said anything or if I didn't recognize them, the quality of my son's life would be declining and we would just be, oh, he's being medicated you know, and make excuses for it and that doesn't work. So, Fast forward, I think now I, I've, I've even perfected it to the point where I was telling Eileen, I'm like, I make a decision every morning between doing the dishes and taking my own pro tandem. You know, that's a boundary. I'm going to take care of me. The dishes can wait because I'm protecting myself. And uh, I'm not even going to like, I'm going to celebrate myself for that decision. There's, there's absolutely no guilt whatsoever. And if it comes to vacuuming the floor or you know, sleeping in for an extra 30 minutes. If I, if I need that sleep, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to feel really good about it. 
And um, I don't even care at this point if the laundry sits in the dryer. If I need a shower, it's going to sit there because that's my boundary to make sure that I am well taken care of. And it really comes from this place of self-love, just knowing what I need to feel safe and to feel like I can take care of myself and anything outside of that. Um, it's not a judgment. It's just, it's just outside the bubble. And I've even gotten to the point now where I can see something that I need to respond to. And if it's too late at night and I don't have the energy, I'll put a boundary and go, you know what? I'll, I'll deal with that tomorrow. You know, I don't have to deal with everything today. So I think the most difficult thing is starting to find ways to implement it because you just think it means telling everybody no. And it doesn't necessarily mean that. It means a lot more about telling yourself yes and understanding that everything has a time and place and doesn't all have to be right now. So I found that to be very helpful. Um, the other thing that I'm learning that I think is really helpful for this, uh, this topic is, you know, there's so many um, medical and mental health conditions that are understudied and uh, not surprisingly, many of them start, the research starts with men. So when it comes to women and our need to multitask, it's even more important that we learn to take care of ourselves because we may be dealing with things that are yet unknown because we're, we're not getting a, a ton of the research right away. So it's, it, we have to take care of ourselves and make sure that our health is priority because we might be dealing with things that it, you know, will take the, the community years to understand and, and support us with. So I worry about those things less now that I know how to take care of myself um on a daily basis so i think it has also been really important as i interact with other people that i don't let someone's opinion um or needs kind of push in front of my own i can feel really strong and say these are my expectations this is what i need from you and this is what i'll give to you and i don't i don't say yes to more than i need to and i don't <laughs> I don't uh, decline help when I need it. I know that's another really strong boundary. So um, it's all based in self-love, if that helps to, to make it a little bit easier. So that's my message. Um, I don't know, <laughs> I could talk for hours. I'm trying to limit it <laughs> to 15 minutes. No, so. No, I, you know, when I listen to you, it also rings true for me that uh, when you take care of yourself, like you took your vitamins, that makes you be more present and stronger to be uh, 100% in the power of the moment exactly. and the power of the present. And so when we do that, we are actually showing up better. We're more effective and we get things done better instead of dragging ourselves from situation to situation and living from crisis to crisis. Exactly. And I also love, I mean, I know that you and I have talked a lot about self-love. And when you said to me, uh, just taking a shower in the morning, yeah. that's self-love. And I went, oh, <laughs> you know, oh. It, it's all part of that, giving myself the, the, the energy and those, that just that sense of being for the day. Mm -hmm. so, thank you everyone for coming tonight. We are so grateful to have Rochelle share with us about boundaries and uh, next month, we are doing men's health all five weeks. So we have got a great lineup of people. We have Marco coming back. We have Kyle speaking. We have Seth Mulder speaking. And the other two spots, I'm still getting great people to fill those. So we are going to be talking about men's health with it being Father's Day, just like we have this month focused really on women's health. So thank you, everyone, for coming. And we'll see you next week and invite your friends back. Okay. Now, if we can go to questions or any comments. Yeah, it's not really a question, but uh, I just really appreciated, Rochelle, that you said um, saying no isn't necessarily a no to other people. It's a yes to yourself because that word is something that I have struggled with. It seems like it's just so easy that yes just rolls off the tongue when somebody asks me for something. So um, yeah, interesting way to put that. Thank you. <laughs> No, I understand completely. That's my first, I was like, yes, ah, I need that back. You know? <laughs> and it's like, oh, I said, yes, how do I get out of that? Ah, it's like your brain just kind of responds before you can. And, and it was, you know, and I'll tell you this, that um, 
when I learned that saying no to someone else means saying yes to me, it, it did change my life also. And I, and I, here's one of the tricks is that I learned to say yes to myself in all these little moments around my house. Yes, I want my Axio. Yes, I do want coffee still. <laughs> yes, I want to wear earrings today. What happened is the tiny little things, all the decisions I was making that I would be doing on autopilot, now I was training my brain to say yes to me. And the next time someone came up to me and they're like, so do you want to pick up an extra shift? I was like, no. <laughs> no, I want to say yes to my hot bath tonight. Because <laughs> I had created a, a pattern and a pathway and it just became, that part became easier. So I do, I do recommend um, that little strategy. It, it makes the process really seamless. I like how you made the boundary seem like a good thing. Because to me, boundaries are always negative and I like the way you change that around so I can think differently about it. Thank you. Yeah, my experience with boundaries was negative too. It was always someone telling me what I couldn't do that I wanted to do. Um, and it usually meant that I had to go without something I needed. And and maybe it's just my personality constantly looking for a win-win. Um, but I wanted to start winning too. So I was like, I don't know how, okay, I can't live my whole life like this. <laughs> So I appreciate that because uh, that was the motivation behind, I had the same experience and, and I needed something different too, because um, I realized that to live sustainably meant I needed a way to get my vitamins every day. And that's really where it started, right? I, Eileen, I can't, I can't remember to take my vitamins every day. Every day I need to take these, like you're asking me too much. When I realized that that was my line, <laughs> that's how little uh, self-care I had for myself, I knew at that point I had to change my thinking. Here's the other part though. You were giving them to your son every day religiously. I, I was, I didn't miss a day, <laughs> but I couldn't give them to myself because then we were off to whatever. And I was like, no, no, no. That <laughs> yeah. It was a big deal. Was, Something's wrong. I mean, help me. <laughs> <laughs> so the new rule is if your son needs a timeout, you need a timeout. If your right. son vitamins and you need your vitamins and that's how you self-care with your children and and with life is that uh that was something that we also learned along this way the last few months <laughs> yeah and it's actually interesting when i started to do that i would say okay mommy's turn um for vitamins and now he's he's starting to scoop his own vitamins into the blender and then when it's mommy's turn he's starting to undo the caps to hand me my pills so <laughs> like oh my goodness so you know it started with mommy's shoes so okay we're walking out the door transitions are still very difficult but um I know he can handle getting us both our shoes but when he started to be able to like scoop his own vitamins into the blender and then hand me my pills oh I just felt victorious <laughs> so yeah change is possible change our minds and then we can change everything else Right. It starts with the mind. It does. It does in the heart and loving myself too. I'm like, I love you enough to give you all these vitamins. I make sure he gets everything. He gets his Axio, he gets his, his Protandum, his Nerf One. And then there's my Trace Energizer pack sitting right there, just staring back at me. <laughs> like, hello, do I, am I important to you too? I'm like, you are, I swear, I swear. So it was, it's good because otherwise um, I would carry the Trice Energizer pack around all day long. <laughs> that didn't improve the situation. So if he's taking pills, I'm taking that. And that means actually taking them at the same time. So yeah, changing the mind, um, but then also opening your heart and making it fun. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you, Rochelle. And um, just for some of you who are, uh, Rochelle, as you know, she's working with neurodiversity. She is launching her website uh, within the next couple of days. Oh, it launched last night. Oh, you launched last <laughs> it night? Launched, it launched. So uh, that's rochellechandler.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's going to have great tools on there for parents, for wives, for husbands, for anyone who deals with any neurodiversity um, in their family. So. I, I invite you to join her and her journey and uh, share the information with other people too. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks. Good night. Bye-bye.
Thanks for watching, and remember, one change can have an enormous effect. Remember to subscribe, hit the bell and the like, and we'll see you next time on Love to Live.